Now, Project Comet, okay, its main purpose is UX design and prototyping. That's what we're doing, UX design and prototyping. And we tried to build this, this program with this in mind, design at the speed of thought, which means that speed is very important because you're, you're thinking about what your concept should look like and you're, you're moving shapes and objects, but the thing is you usually have a lot of rep repetitive um, items like menu items, images, profiles, that kind of stuff. So you want to move all of them together. Okay, you want to move very quickly. Now in Photoshop, for example, or other products, you, know, you can easily do that, but you have to select a lot of stuff. You have to move these and group these and nest these there, et cetera, et cetera. And we try to uh, build this interface as flexible and as intuitively as we possibly could. So we think that we found the right balance between the amount of space you need on screen and the amount of buttons that you have, the amount of tools that you have on screen to work with. Now, I'm going to try and jump into this demo from now on. There we go. Now, before I get to, okay, before I get to Comet, let me just quickly jump to Photoshop, okay? Um, again, I can't really see your hands, but I'm just assuming that a lot of you designers here will be using Photoshop amongst other programs as well. So what we have today is, because we have also updated that software, is you know, we support multiple artboards, so you can just design from multiple resolutions at the same time, multiple devices. So I've got a couple here. Let me just zoom out a little bit like this. And this is all nice, but again, you have a lot of layers to work with, okay? Um, and of course, you have to name these, uh, these things as well. You have to export these assets, which is something you can still do if you want to make like, like a pre mock up, so to speak. So, say for example, like for this one here, this is my iPhone uh, mountain bike. I've got a couple of layers. This one's called Hike. So, just so you know, as a quick tip before we start, because I do need to have these assets inside of Comet as well. Um, when I look at my files here in my Finder, so this is. Um, this is the name of the file I currently have. And there's a folder here called Assets. And I'm just going to re remove that folder here. Now, when I just rename any of these files, I'm going to call this one hike.png because it should be a transparent PNG. Now, I'm not saving anything. I'm not doing anything. Now, when I go back to the Finder, oh, look, that folder is back. He's back at 12.11. And look, and I have my hike.png icon. So it automatically exports all your assets. So if you're a designer, just keep, keep in mind that you can still do this. For example, I like this background image. This background image should be a JPEG. It's renamed as .jpeg. I'm just quickly um, oop, try this again here. JPEG, or maybe I want to have a second one, which is 50% its size, bike small .jpeg as well. Again, you don't have to save. As you can see, it's just automatically generating all these assets while you're working, which is really cool because if I just do something silly, like change the colors, hit enter, go back. It just refreshes and just regenerates all these assets from Photoshop. Now, you can do this well for SVG files, anything you like. Okay, this is called Adobe Generator. If you want to Google this, Adobe Generator. Now, anyway, what we also have to give you assets is Adobe Illustrator, of course. So you can export your SVG files from here if you want to keep everything nice and vector. And once you have these assets in place, we can finally move on to Comet. Now, this is what it looks like, okay? It's a blank screen. Let's start with a few basic tools. So let's just start by just drawing a couple of basic shapes. Now, these shapes and these objects, these handles, look exactly like what we have in Adobe Illustrator because we really like what we did there in Adobe Illustrator. So I can just come in, just drag any of these corners to make them round. This is all vector, so you can just play around with any type of uh, vector points that you like. I can just uh, change the fill color. Um, I sorry, border color. I can just in maybe increase this, maybe give it a five. I can give it a different fill color. Anyway, these are just very basic tools. You would kind of you know, assume that this would be in there. Well, you know, it is. So this is all vector. So you have a couple of basic shapes that you can use. If you're into Illustrator or other vector drawing programs, there we go. So if even like, say, you're drawing things in InDesign, for example, you can vector shapes as well. So this is all vector. You can just come in here. You can copy this. You can paste this here directly into Comet. I'm going to double click this. As you can see, this is all still vector. You can play around with shapes, uh, curves, etc., and just keep editing. So this is something that we support as well. One of the main focuses on using Comet is going to be the integration between Photoshop, Illustrator, and Comet. Okay, those three have to work together. Now, 
these are just uh, a few basic things that we can do. But of course, we need a canvas. We need something to work on. Let me just try and work on an iPhone 6 uh, design. So I've got my artboard tool. And here on the right, I can actually choose a different resolution. I'm going to go for the iPhone 6. This is my iPhone 6. And uh, let's start designing something. I'm just going to just sort of drag a, um, a frame, something like this. I can um, maybe make it larger like that. I'm going to remove the border, give it a dark fill like this. And now let's do this again. Let's draw another frame on this like that. And then maybe give this a different fill. I can duplicate this by alt dragging. I can come into my finder and uh, give this an image, just drag and drop this in here like that. Let's just remove, let's reduce the opacity a little bit more. There we go. So this is going to be my basic setup. Um, I have some icons as well, which are all um, SVGs or vector files, okay, because we want to look pretty on any resolution. Now, these come from Adobe Illustrator, um, or they can come from Photoshop as well. The main thing is their vector. So again, I just come in here and maybe just drag maybe this one, which is my menu item. I'm going to put this here and uh, maybe a search icon as well. Oh, drag on it. There we go. Just put it there. Basic text, same thing. If I can come in, I go to basic text tool. Again, it's you know, still pretty basic, still pretty basic. I'm just going to type in uh, featured, featured. So let's change the uh, fill of this type. There we go. And let's just change the font. I've got my system font here. Right? Let's uh, take an open sans, something like that. Same thing. Let's duplicate this. As you can see, this is just basic, basic tools that you can use. Uh, Yosemite Mountains, for example like that, maybe 40, Ooh, that's over the top, maybe 30, there we go. Anyway, so these are your, this is your basic setup, okay? So this, you just drag shapes and boom, that's it. Now, if we take this um, one step further, if we, for example, open up a different version of this, like this one. So we played around with this one just a little bit more. And so what we can do is, I'm just going to remove this little circle here. Maybe I want to give the impression that we have um, more of these images here, so we can um, we can make that clear by putting a couple of circles here, like like a couple of empty circles, and then one is is filled with the color, so kind of implying that when you, that you're at the second image out of five images, something like that. So let's just drag a um, a basic circle to make that clear. I'm going to remove the fill. I'm going to give this a white border. And uh, I need a couple of those. And this is where the clutter starts in many other design applications. Because you have to you know, make a copy, 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 and then circle, circle, copy, circle, copy, two, circle, copy, three. You know, this is how it goes. Plus, if you want to change the circle afterwards, same thing. You have to edit most of these things, make new copies. You know where this is going. Anyway, so I'm just going to take this shape and click the Repeat Grid tool, which is this nice little looking button here, Repeat Grid. And from now, from here on, I can actually just drag out multiple copies and just change the spacing like that. I can actually do this this way as well, which is pretty cool. There we go. And I can just move this to the center. Smart guides are going to help you and say, stop. So this is centered now. So this is something I can use like that as well. I've got some extra elements. Uh, again, this is just a group of items. This is basic text, basic text, shape, shape. There we go. Everybody's happy. Same thing. Um, it would be cool to kind of swipe through these you know, kind of lists of items. So I'm just going to uh, try and simulate that by, again, copying you know, this information. So I'm just going to take this group, choose repeat grip. I'm just going to move it like that. Just add some extra elements, just change the spacing. Maybe add a little more like this. Uh, let's put in an image. I've got some, an image here. See, I can put in one image, or maybe, nah, let's put in more images like this. Here we go, just put in multiple images. So this is, <laughs> cool. So this is really, really quick, okay? And even if you dragged in, if you say, if, say I have like four boxes and I dragged in eight images, okay, because I like to live dangerously, even if you then later use repeat grid to add more of those, those images will be there. So it hasn't forgotten the images, they will still be in there in, in there, which is really, really cool. Anyway, so this is my, my main design. I'm kind of, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, let's move the artboard. I'm gonna choose the, uh, the move tool, select the artboard. Uh, let's just move it here. Oh, of course, you have to select the artboard. Again, smart guides are going to help me to align all of this. There we go. So we've got a couple more of these pages. Again, this looks, this, this looks pretty nice. Oh, there's oh, more pages, apparently. I've got a lot of pages. Um, artboards is really important 
And because we built Comet from the ground up, we were able to use all the hardware in your, in your system and make sure that performance is key. Let me open up a different project. Let me show this one. Now, let me zoom out a little bit because this is a different project. And oh, look, more artboards with live text. And I'm going to, oh, there's more. There's more artboards. There's artboards everywhere. So as you can see, this is a live rendered text images. Performance is awesome. OK. Um, this is a nice laptop. But I'm assuming that if you're a professional designer, you might have a better configuration than what I have at the moment. And it doesn't matter. I mean, I can just render this live here on screen. So same thing here when it comes to, say, um, what I have here on the right. I've got a, another arbor that I can probably work on. Uh, yeah, this one, for example. So again, same thing. I've got a couple of stars. I've got a couple of reviews. Um, just take these items, choose repeat grid. Let me just um, move this that way, maybe just add something like this. There we go. This looks pretty good. Let's drag in a couple more images. We love images. Let's drag them in there. I think the images are too big. Well, that's not a problem, because the moment you use the repeat grid option, you can just come in, double click it, double click any of these, and then just change what this looks like. Just change the size. There's just still a, a line here like that, which means I can also adjust the spacing now and duplicate a bit more. See, there's the other image I haven't used yet, like this, and just keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. So this is how quickly you can use this. Now, once you're done designing or you have a couple of pages, it's time to show this to your client. And of course, you, um, you, you've given the interface a lot of thought, and you also know, well, I'm going to put this icon there so I can travel to this page and go back. Anyway, let's, um, let's try and take this example again. And let's see what we can do with navigation, OK? Because again, this is all static. It's, it's, again, it's prototyping what you're doing here. Um, but let's just try and give it a little bit of navigation. So let's imagine that if I were to click this image, I would land on this page, OK? And if I were to, say, click this image, I would go here. And if I click on See More, I would just go somewhere else. OK, let's give this a try. So I'm going to switch from design mode to prototype mode. Okay, And this is actually very simple. What you can do is you can set your home screen. Okay, And every item that you select has this little connector. Now, I was going from this to here, oh, to here. And this is the target. What kind of a transition would you like? Do you want easing? And how long should this take? Cool. Now, but when I'm here, when I click this arrow, I want to go back to the main page. Um, I didn't set up the left versus right swiping. So you just have to choose different directions, but I'm not going to spend any time on that. Again, I wanna, if I click here, I want to go there. And when I click here, oh, I have to select it, of course. I want to go there. Anyway, let's, let, let's go crazy. Now, cool, done. Drag lines. Anyone can do this, OK? Let's give this a go. Hit the play button. And now you have a simulator, which you can use. So if I click the image, I go here. I can go back. Uh, I can click this image. I can click See More. And I just quickly run through my interface. Okay, And this just took a couple of seconds. And the cool thing about this is even when I'm designing this, so this is my, my preview, my live simulation, I can just move this to the side like that. And even though I'm working here, I can go back to, say, design mode. And this, this just kind of sticks around. You know? it, just, it, just, it just stays there. So I can just maybe come in and change this. And you can see that even the live preview, this will actually update as well. So this is actually very powerful because I can just play around with this, see, and then show what this will do. Now, uh, a feature that we will support is that you just connect your mobile device to this, and you can just preview live on your device as well. You can actually use, use your fingers to operate this. Um, so we're talking about iOS, um, Android, Windows. So this is all the stuff that we're thinking about that we're working on. Of course, when you're working on this, um, it's nice that it works on your screen, but you kind of have to get that to your client, your coworker, your developer, your friend, anyone. But what you can do is um, you can just 
share this online. You can share your prototype, OK? And the only thing I have to do is click this button, share prototype link. Anyway, it's going to take your entire project, everything you did, and it's going to upload that to one of the Adobe servers. And it's going to give you a short URL that you can use. There you go, done. I'm going to click the URL, which will open up my web browser. And now we can do the exact same thing and test navigation in a web browser. So it's something that you can do to share this with other clients. Um, and then they can get back to you for more feedback. I'm just going to go back to my timing. There we go. Now, um, this is what Comet is about. This is the pre-version that I'm using at the moment. For those who followed or have seen the Adobe Max keynotes and the Sneaks session that we have, so at Adobe Max, which is a four-day conference, we have a session called Sneaks. It's extremely popular. So what we do is we basically fly in one of the programmers, and they just show on screen the technology they're working on. And one of those things was Project Comet as well. Now, um, I'm going to show you three five-second clips, that's it, OK, of what was shown there. Now, this is, I'm not saying that these features will be implemented in the final product. I'm saying that this is what we're working on, OK? That, that, that's all I can say at the moment, because it kind of depends on what the results are going to be like. So let me just quickly go back to the presentation. And let's, let's give this a try here. Now, imagine. Because you see, you've seen me dragging images, OK? Which, these are my own local images. But imagine having the same thing with text. So one of the things that we presented there was a samples panel with just generic names, John and Paul and Tom and that kind of stuff. So you just click a button, and it just fills up with names. Or maybe use a text file that you can just use to drag She's just text, enter, drag your own data in there as well, OK? Or maybe do the same thing, but you're working with Google Sheets, where you just have an Excel file, a CSV, or anything else. Again, same thing. You click it, and it's in there. And the most spectacular thing that I think we showed was, I'm not sure who's familiar with Adobe Stock. OK, so Adobe has their own stock photography and video. Um, uh, a business website, stock.adobe.com. You should definitely check it out if you're a designer. And even integrating stock, it's, it's, um, it's a basic web browser that we have here, even integrating stock and try and find a stock image, like in this case Yosemite, which gives you a million results, and then just click those files. It will populate this directly from a stock photography website, from our Adobe stock photography website here which is, I think, is, is amazing. Because that way, you just make, you build your prototype. You have that skeleton design with generic name. The name goes here. Address goes here. Picture goes there. And then you just connect this to a source of information. You drag it in, and you've got your live simulation prototyping. Awesome stuff. Now, we're not there yet, OK? If you're interested, if you want to learn more about Project Comet, go to adobe.com slash go slash Project Comet. There you can sign up for a public beta, which is not done yet. Can't really say when, is, when it's really, really going to, be, going to be done, but it's going to be somewhere between today and uh, a couple more weeks, probably somewhere in March. I'm not entirely sure. kind of depends on how fast development is going. You can also follow this project at, at Adobe UX on Twitter. Uh, you also have the Dutch uh, Adobe Twitter there as well, other stuff as well. You can follow me around as well if you want to. Now, if you have specific questions, because we're on a really tight schedule here, if you have very specific questions about what it can do, or what you're looking at, or why you're excited, or what feature that you think should definitely be in this software, I'll be here all day. Come and talk to me, OK? And then we can discuss uh, uh, your needs, and then we can try and translate that as best, best as we can back to the development team, because they're, they're really, really excited about all this kind of stuff. Thank you.